Hey everybody, welcome back to Art by Galen. I'm Galen Eilenfeldt, and today we're going to begin a new series on my channel uh, based around simplifying constructive anatomy. Um, now, the purpose of this series is for us to improve our figurative art. One of the keys to doing good figurative art is knowing the structure underneath. Now, unfortunately, you can't know what the structure is without studying it, so that's what we're planning to do here. Uh, I'm, I'm doing it so I can improve, and I'm sharing it with you, that way you can improve right along with me. So uh, what we're going to do, we're literally going to start from the ground up. We're going to start with the feet and work our way all the way up to the skull. We're going to learn the internal structure. We're going to learn how it moves. We're going to learn how it doesn't move. And we're going to learn how to take those structures and simplify it. That way it's easier for us to create a character from scratch. So with that, welcome to Simplified Constructive Anatomy. So in order to simplify it, we need to know what the structure underneath is. And we're not going to go too into detail as far as the things that don't move. Um, we mainly want to focus on the points that, uh, that do actually bend and articulate and the rest of it will break down into simplified shapes. So this is the top, this side is the top down view of a foot. Uh, this is the inside view of a foot. So this would be the, uh, the ball of the foot right here on the inside. This would be the big toe. Um, but it's broken into three sections. If you break the back right across right to this point, this is called the tarsus. The second section is called the metatarsus. And then these down here are your phalanges or your toes, which we're all probably familiar with. But the reason that I'm showing you the skeletal structure here is I, I want you to see the locations of the bones. This helped me a lot when I was first studying it. But because there's so many of them, it can get kind of confusing. And um, especially when you're looking at the various angles of the foot and everything. And uh, so if I color code them, you can tell exactly what bones you are, what bones you're looking at, in, you know, relative to the position. Okay, so here we've got some color coding so you can recognize which bone is where. Uh, like we've got, you know, obviously the heel is here and you can see that in the red. The big toe is blue, the bone behind the big toe is orange, etc. Uh, from this from this interior side view, you don't really see these two sections. Uh, so, but you will note that when you're drawing the bone structure, at least you can see the uh, the back edge of this. What would be the pinky toe? Like this would be the toe itself. This would be the the, the more flat part of the foot. One thing worth noting is that from here back doesn't really have much movement at all. It doesn't bend, it doesn't flex. I mean, it has the ability to shift a little bit, but not enough that it's going to affect the way that you would draw it. The vast majority of the movement is going to happen down here in the toes. And you're also going to have a point of articulation back here at the ankle, but we'll go into that in just a second. Um, but the one thing I do want to point out with the toes is that at that first joint, your four smaller toes actually have two knuckles, like two points of articulation. Your big toe only has one. So your big toe, like as it bends, you're going to have, you know, this kind of stubby part that we have, and then you'll have that next section, and then that's it. It goes right into your foot. But your smaller toes are actually going to have this kind of step shape, depending on how much pressure you're putting. I mean, they may just be very flat looking if your foot is very flat and you're not putting a lot of pressure on it. But if there is a lot of pressure on the foot and you can see the toes, you'll notice that there is this kind of shape that happens here when it connects to the foot. And you've got both of those, you know, toe knuckles. <laughs> uh, now that we know the bending points of the, uh, of the toes, we're going to talk a little bit about the ankle and how it works. Um, there's a this this bone here is called or this this whole this whole yellow bone here is called the tarsus and um, this upper portion I believe is called the trochlea of the tarsus um, and uh, but it's it's kind of a saddle shape like it's got this this arch and then it's it's actually indented on the inside to where your uh, your tibia rests on top of it and so like if you're looking at it from the front it's it's kind of like this it's got this shape here and then it comes down into your into the rest of your foot and 
I'm exaggerating. It, it doesn't have that extreme of an arc to it. But um, So the tibia, when it fits over this, it connects right on the top. And on the, on the inside of the foot, it actually dips down a little bit and then comes up. And then the inside just begins to come up straight from there. Then you've got a smaller bone on the outside of your leg called the fibula that actually, it begins a little bit lower. It has this protrusion and then it comes up as well. Uh, we're not going to talk about like the upper portion of this. We're mainly focusing on how the, uh, <clears throat> how the ankle connects and how it moves. Now, if we simplify the bottom of the foot, just for the sake of showing this, um, so this, this would be the big toe here. I mainly want you to look at this portion here. You'll notice that, and let me switch colors here. Um, you'll notice that the protrusion, like the inside of the ankle is higher than the protrusion on the outside of the ankle. This is going to be really bad, but we'll, uh, we'll show it just for, for demonstration here. Um, so if we've got our feet and then we've got another leg, and these are some, some really, really bad uh, sketches here, but so for the, where the ankle point is, like it's not going to be just like this. An easy way to remember it is it makes kind of an upward arrow like so. You'll have a protrusion here and here, these low points on the outside and then slightly higher on the inside. That's a good way to remember that. Okay, so from here it's it's pretty easy to tell. Like you know, this is the this is the heel, very obviously. This is where the meat for the ball of the foot would be. Um, this is where the the arch of the foot would be if the person indeed has an arch. Some people are very flat-footed, and so the the skin and tissue of their foot, and sometimes even the bone structure is a lot more flat. Like it may actually come closer down to the ground. Um, and some people like myself, I have a really high arch. So this is pretty close to how my foot is. Another thing to keep in mind is when you're drawing the actual shape of your foot, the, uh, you know, let's, let's just pretend we've got this all drawn in here where the leg comes up. Like you gotta remember the bone is going to sit right on top of this here. And then it's going to go upward. And you, uh, you probably know if you've banged your shin on a, on something before that that bone is actually really close to the front of your leg and you've got a lot more open space in the back but it doesn't just go straight up from your heel like some people I've, I've seen and I drew it that way when I was younger <laughs> uh, it actually does come inward first and then up so it's got this movement like so and depending on the person the the angle will vary a little bit but it's always gonna come in and then, uh, so this point right here is the actual point of articulation. So, so when you go to bend your foot, it'll actually rotate from that point. Oh, we've got our colors on here. Yeah. So here you can see when you go to actually bend your foot, it bends from that point. And one thing to keep in mind, you can, you can use this to kind of gauge a good, a good amount of like what's realistic rotation and what's not for where the fibia overlaps or tibia, tibia, uh, where, where the tibia overlaps on top of the tarsus is it actually has a little lip on the front and back. And if you put the same like marking on the top of the bone, in the front and then the top of the bone in the back, like inside or on, on the edges of where that arch is. And then you go to rotate it. You'll know that it's going to stop whenever those bones touch. Like it's not going to, it's not going to go farther up than that. And it's not going to go farther back than that. Um, most people are going to have a lot more movement downward than they will upward, but, uh, and it will vary from person to person. Some people can get them up pretty high, but, um, just keep that in mind. That's if uh, basically if you're confused about the movement, I mean, that's a good way to help kind of gauge it. OK, so now that we've gone over this, let's learn how to simplify it. Um, 
And this is just the way that I've found how to do it. I'm not trying to say that it's the best way. I just know this is what works for me and it's the easiest way that I've found. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a vertical line from the front of the leg. And we'll give ourselves a little bit of space outside the bone because we don't want it to be we don't want it to be uh, right up on the bone. We're, we're mimicking some of the, the tissues here. And we know that the bone is closer to the front, so we're giving us we're giving ourselves some uh, some space in the back here. And when we pull this line down, we don't want to go all the way to the bottom. Like if this was the floor level, we want to go about how high we want the arch of the foot to be. So if the if the arch of the foot is this high, that's about the height where we want to stop this line. And then we'll pull that out all the way out to the point to where the toes actually start. So that would cut off here. Now from here, give yourself just a straight line back to that back line and then right inside here you'll give yourself a circle it's basically going to be cut in half by that line and it doesn't have to be perfect remember this is just a rough way to build out your foot i'm going to show how we build the the uh the simplified structure and then i'll give you guys an example of how to use it in three dimensions but uh the main thing of this is just keeping it simple because the foot is one of those really frustrating things. Um, then what I like to do is give myself basically a little square box <clears throat> off of the back edge. It's, but I like to give myself a little square box off of the back edge. Um, the, uh, the proportions, only really matter as far as like the thickness of the heel like how how thick do you want the heel to be and then how far out does it does it go back it's not really relative um, you could say it's probably about half the height of, of, of uh, you know from here to here but it's just pushed down to the to the ground level and then from that ground level you'll also come over here and give yourself a little box for the toes and you might be looking at this thinking okay this is not very simple this is more this is geometry and I hate doing this but it's a good way to remember like the basic structure of the foot because then you know okay so this is the outer portion of my heel I know it's gonna arch up a little bit I know it's gonna come down I know this is where the ball of the foot is so there's gonna be a little pad I know this is where the toes start and the first toe has two knuckles, so we'll have a you know, little pad here and then a bigger pad for the front of the big toe. And then it will and then it'll come up into the top of the foot. There's only a little bit of tissue on the top of the foot. It's not gonna go above the bone too much because our feet are very bony. And then it's gonna turn up into the lower leg. We know the back of the foot there's the heel there will be some padding on this and it's gonna it's not remember it's not gonna go straight up it's gonna curve right back in and then it'll go up into our calf and so as long as you remember like that structure that'll make it easier to go into building it in three dimensions which we're about to do okay so one thing I do want to point out is that this right here is pretty exaggerated uh, most of the time it's not going to curve in that much. I just really want to illustrate that it does do that. Uh, it'll probably be a bit more subtle on most people, something about like so, instead of this this big indention. Okay, so let's work on taking what we've done here and make it into a three-dimensional uh, thing. So this triangular shape that's here, let's... I think of that more as a wedge. Um, like if you have like if this is the front edge that's right here and then it comes back kind of like so but instead of going to a point it's going to bend around like so and then it would come down and like that so this would be like the the end step of the foot this this section here would be the top of the foot <clears throat> and then we would have the uh like a cylinder for where the leg itself is actually coming up so like you know this this point here where we've got the the part of the leg that's coming upward from the ankle 
that's that is where that would be and just to demonstrate the shape like it obviously it would go up a lot higher but um, so that's that and then we would have the little protrusion of the heel just by kind of simulating a cube attached to the back and it wouldn't actually stick out like on the sides it's just on the bottom and the back so you, you could imagine it fused with this uh, wedge that we made in the first place it almost looks like the heel of a shoe, like just that, that little back portion that sticks out and down a little bit. Um, and then the same thing for our, uh, for our box, like for the toes. The, uh, probably the only thing that I would change, like instead of making it just a, a plain rectangle for the toes, is I would make it, um, I would make it more of a uh, kind of cut shape. And it can you can just keep it straight for simplicity's sake to start with, and then you can build the shape further as you go on. Um, but just remember that it sits not right up against it, but slightly underneath it. Like I like to pull it back about to the point of where the ball of the foot would start. And then, <clears throat> so from here we've got the basics. The next step from here would be okay, figuring out where the toe is going to be. And uh, so if I want this to be the inside of the foot. The toe, the big toe is going to be here on this point, and then the four other toes will follow. Uh, another note, like with the front of the foot, sometimes it's straight like this. Like this is relatively straight. There's a little bit of a curve to it. Sometimes it's like that. Sometimes it's actually straight. Sometimes it has a really steep arc. Sometimes it's more leaning towards the big toe, like where that part is the the middle or the second toe would be the biggest um, the second toe would be the furthest one like sticking outward and sometimes they, they actually stagger a little bit it just really depends on the person uh, there's a there's a big variation for that so that one you can play with <laughs> I like to put a little line here to remind myself that the big toe only has one knuckle and that the uh, the other ones have two and uh, depending on the curve of your foot I mean they they might the lines for this might be more like so. Um, but from here, so we can start really kind of like figuring out how we're going to shape everything. So, okay, we, need, we know the big part of the toe. Toe is going to come up and connect to the foot. And then the back of the big toe is going to come back down to this point and then up a little bit, showing the ball of the foot. It's going to arc upward and then it's going to arc back downward toward the heel. And then at the back of the heel, it's going to wrap around and then come back up. Now we know the inside of the, we know the inside of the ankle, the protrusion is higher. So it's going to be up here where the outside of it would be a little bit lower at this point. Um, you may see it on this outside edge a little bit from this angle, but you may not. It just depends on like the thickness of the person and then it would come up into your leg. And then from here, you'd have the same thing, but just a little bit higher up. And then the top of the foot is pretty simple. I mean, it stays, re you know, relatively flat with, uh, you know, the, you know, the curvature of it. Um, and then we can come down from here and st start drawing in the toes. And uh, I don't know about you guys, like, I don't know how you feel about drawing feet, but they've always been something incredibly awkward for me. Like no matter how many times I draw them, they don't in my head, they don't feel right. Even, even if they are anatomically accurate. Um, I guess it's just because I'm, I'm not, I don't know. <laughs> it's just a, a weird thing, but, um, anyhow, so there's that. And then you'll start to have the raised part of the foot that comes up in towards the, uh, the shin. So you can you can apply this in many different ways. You can see some demonstrations here that I've done of various angles, taking them from the more basic shapes up here, uh, adding in the heel and the toe blocks, and then starting to break it down, and then finally adding in the actual details. And uh, once you've added the details, you can take it through your stages of, of rendering. Now again, it's it's always good to have references. It's always good to have references. I don't think that, that it's ever... Uh, 
a bad idea to have references. I know a lot of artists tend to look at it as cheating when you're using references. Uh, and it's not. It's, in my opinion, in my opinion, it's cheating to trace an image and then try to render it and then call that your artwork. It's fine if you're doing it for studies. Like, okay, I'm going to trace this out real quick and I'm going to practice to do rendering. I'm going to practice to do shading, that sort of thing. That's fine. If you want to make 50 copies of something and then shade them all different ways, that's fine. But, you're, you know, those are studies. You're not trying to claim that as your own. Uh, but for anything that you're doing for yourself or for client work, absolutely use references. And uh, I know feet aren't the most interesting thing. I, I know they're also kind of an awkward thing to draw. Hopefully this helps to kind of simplify the construction a little bit. And, um, you know, this will kind of kick off our anatomy series, basically. I'm, I'm going to continue it like this. We're going to go over the basic bone structures. And then, um, you know, once we've covered the bones of the whole skeleton, then we're going to repeat the whole sequence, but with adding muscle and tissue to those areas. Uh, the foot is kind of an exception because we've already covered a little bit of the tissues and stuff, but there's, there's not a lot to really be said about it. I don't think it really warrants having two whole, uh, videos for itself. Um, but, uh, so next week, uh, next Sunday on my Twitch channel, that's twitch.tv slash art underscore by underscore Galen. I'll put a link down in the description if you'd like to check it out and follow my channel. Next Sunday, we're going to be doing another study stream. We're going to be going over um, the lower leg, the uh, the upper leg, and the knee joint, how they connect. And we'll, we'll also be kind of recapping a little bit on the feet. Be sure to join me for that. Um, and then after after that's gone on, you know, we'll, we'll take the content from that and turn that into another video similar to this one. And we'll just keep going with that until we've covered everything. Um, oh, another thing that I forgot to point out is that uh, if you're trying to figure out the size of your foot for your character, this isn't, you know, you know, this isn't accurate all the time, but a good place to start is the length of the foot, like from here to here, is about the equivalent of the inside of your forearm, like from the, where your hand starts to the bend in your elbow is about the size of the foot, roughly. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helps. Um, be sure to leave me your feedback and your comments down below. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know if you, if it helped you. Let me know if uh, you know you think there might be a better way to do this because I'm open to that. I want us to learn, you know, together. Uh, if there's if I'm doing something that there's an easier way, heck yeah, let's do it that way. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyhow, I hope you guys have an awesome day. Keep creating and take care. With that, welcome to Simplified Constructive Amount. Anatomy, anatomy, yes, anatomy. <laughs> uh, so, with that, welcome to simplify. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs>